Hello and welcome to another episode of the DJ Project Criterion Collection. And moving right along, we go to Spine 165, Man Bites Dog, a film by Rémi Bayot, André Bonzel, and Benoît uh, Pauvre, 1992. This is a lot. <laughs> okay, um, alright, first thing I wanted to comment on is the title. Uh, the title, the original French title, is uh, C'est au revoir, prise de chevaux, or It Happened in Your Neighborhood, and then the international title is Man Bites Dog. Uh, this is one of those cases where it seems to be very different, but they both allude to a very similar thing. Um, the original French title um, can be translated as uh, it happened in your neighborhood or it happened near you. Um, and I think it's safe to assume that it is a phrase that um, characterizes media reports, uh, particularly these sensational headlines. And then Man Bites Dog is a famous newspaper adage. Uh, the full text is usually, and this uh, I may, do, I may end up directly quoting this, or this may be a paraphrase, just, just be forewarned. Basically, it's, um, dog bites man is not news because it happens every day. Man bites dog is news because it doesn't happen, or rarely happens. And so with that in mind, it's thought of as kind of, it, it could be thought of as a commentary on news media. And that's certainly one of the things that it's, you can extrapolate from this. Um, when the film came out, it had a certain notoriety. Um, it wasn't as notorious as, say, when Peeping Tom came out, where the British critics insisted that it be flushed down the toilet with all the critics uh, holding the hand, holding and pulling the handle. Um, it. It did cause a sensation, but it wasn't this big, big outcry. There were there were scenes that needed to be trimmed. There were posters that needed to be redone. In fact, on the cover, I don't know if you can, I don't know if this will, you'll be able to see this, but on the lower corner, you see there's a pacifier. Uh, this is the original poster, but in the but in the foreign territories, it was. Um, uh, you actually see dentures flying instead of a pacifier. Uh, I don't know which is what, either of them are pretty bad. So I don't know what will be. I don't know what's what's considered. I don't know if that's. I don't know if anyone's any better. But um, um, and it's not that it's intensely gory. It's it's. Um, I mean, the the interesting thing is that it's it, it's shot in black and white, and the violence is not terribly gruesome. I mean, there's, there's a few, I mean, there's a few shocking moments. What makes this gruesome is there's, um, is the casualness and the, and even some complicity involved. I'll tell you what this film is. Uh, it's basically a, it's about a group of filmmakers who make this documentary about a serial killer who goes around and, um, and has very particular set ideas. And you start knowing these little ideas as they come, as they come through. He, he goes along, he can walk through, um, I don't know what part of Belgium they're supposed to be from. I mean, this, yeah, they're, they're all Belgian, actually. Uh, not necessarily Brussels, but just, I'm not, I'm not sure where exactly. I forget exactly where they where they are, but basically he he, he can walk through the streets. He can wax philosophical about uh, architectural aesthetics, uh, about the uh, the joys of eating a big plate of mussels, uh, mussels, um, uh, the futility of romantic relationships, and uh, the presence of homosexuals in the filmmaking trade and and all this this, this sort of litany of sort of these secret these sort of secretaries and in the middle of 
of killing people and robbing them. And these are, these are, well, he robs a postman once a month, like at the start of, that's the way he starts every month. Um, I'm sure there's some hidden symbolism there. Uh, <laughs> and um, he's mostly interested in lower middle class and poor robbers because those don't make any big, he's not going to go for the big, he's not the kind of guy that goes for the big heist. He's not going to rob the casino. He's not going to rob the bank. He's not going to rob the ambassador he's, or any of those people. It's just basically small, what he considers small people because you, you can, the, the consequences are not, as, are not as dire, but you can still reap some rewards. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> now, now if I, there's going to be, a, this, there's going to be some, uh, quite some ground to cover. Now, if any of this sounds like something from Quentin Tarantino, you're actually right. Um, when, he, when Tarantino saw this film uh, in 1992, uh, that did provide the basis for the script he wrote for Natural Born Killers. So, yes, you can, you can say that Natural Born Killers is an American remake of a European film. And since I've mentioned that, I just want to say that I have seen Natural Born Killers. I am not a big fan of it, and uh, for a couple of reasons. I'm not. Th I don't like Oliver Stone. Um, uh, he just he rubs me the wrong way in so many ways. And yes, this has to do with politics. Um, in fact, he's an example of political films made in the worst way, where there is an agenda, there is a particular viewpoint. And it, do, it can come off as merely just preaching to the choir and alienating the other side. Um, it's because of this that I'm not interested in seeing pretty much any of his films, um, including the films that he is best known for, like Platoon or Born on the Fourth of July. Um, I'm not even interested in seeing World Trade Center. And, that, and people have said that, oh, this is like his most balanced and such. And I'm not even sure I really want to see Alexander. And it's a shame because I know Vangelis did the score for it. So I just maybe I should just stick to the music and just not, not watch the film at all. So I'm not a fan of Oliver Stone. Tarantino, I, I, there is an extreme with Tarantino. Uh, there are people that absolutely love him, and then there are people that absolutely hate him, and I know the reasons why. Um, for me, I, I think he's definitely a unique personality as far as filmmaking. Um, he does have an ear for dialogue, and he does have a respect for cinema. Um, but I've I haven't really gotten into him, and may, and I think this is because I wasn't I wasn't on the Tarantino craze when everybody else was. I mean, I was ten when Reservoir Dogs came out, and there was no way I was going to see it at that at that time, um, and so I came in kind of late in the game. So I was, in fact, it wasn't until two thousand eight that I got around to see Reservoir Dogs. And no, it's not because I was never allowed to, um, certainly allowed to by that point, but it just, it just never struck me as something that I would, um, that I would go see. But, uh, I did see Inglorious Bastards in the theaters. I haven't seen Django Chain, and I'm not sure if I, if I will, uh, probably not, and it's just really just, just, there's just no interest in it. So, Tarantino, I just feel kind of, I'm kind of in the middle. I don't have this intense love. I don't have this intense hate. Yes, I know about all the accusations of plagiarism, uh, <laughs> including this one, you could say, um, with, uh, you know, the natural born killers and, and man bites dog. Um, now back to the film in, in, in the center, uh, now back to the, the film of the subject of this episode. Um, Although I, I guess I'll conclude with uh, if, if you since uh, there is a there is a, a strong similarity between the two. I like Man Bites Dog more than Natural Born Killers. Um, 
Natural Born Killer. The other reason I don't like Natural Born Killers is is that it's it it feels way too over the top, and it feels more like a caricature. And the points that it makes are it feels like it's it just forces you down your throat and it doesn't give you any room to breathe. Though I will say that I think probably the the to the film's credit, what it what it what it did was. What I did, what I did, sort of admire was the backstory, uh, was sort of laying out the conditions as to what kind of leads this sort of these sort of characters. But, but other than that, everything else just feels very over the top, very uh, quite unrealistic. And yet, it's supposed to make this grand point. And I just, I just feel that I, I felt like it was doing too much, and and the end result just feels very sophomoric. Uh, or actually, I, I shouldn't say sophomore, but it, but certainly, it just feels a little bit kind of childish in, in a sense. I don't know. But anyways, back to Man Bites Dog. <laughs> um, it's in uh, this was an early, a fairly early Criterion purchase. Which again, as I said, that this was when I was um, just wanting to explore cinema and just see what was possible. And if something looked intriguing, then it was worth my attention. So it was something that I got very early on, and it was something that I probably didn't really build on from there. I didn't, I didn't seek out similar films um, like it. And looking back on that, um, revisit, and it's been a while since I've seen it, but re reviewing it, um, especially for this, I, I got... I had the feeling that this was a film uh, made by 20-year-olds for 20-year-olds. Uh, it, it, is, it is the kind of film that when you're at that age and if you have the capabilities either because you're in film school and you need to do a project or you feel like, oh, this would be a fun thing to do, it's the kind of thing that you, you would do, especially if you're someone who likes to wax philosophical about certain things like, oh, would it be cool if we do this? And, and now why do I say it like that? Well, it's because the issues they provoke in the film, just this, this whole action, and, and, and it all has to do with, some, with something about filmmaking, uh, about the nature of filmmaking, the, the, the role of a producer, um, the understanding of the violence in relation to the media, violence in the relation to culture, violence in the relation to society. There's all these different topics that it brings up and it gives it gives a sort of air of intelligence. But the execution and the conclusions can come off as quite sophomoric. And not in the pejorative sense. Uh, people like to use sophomoric as, as, a, as a pejorative sense, meaning that it's, it's, it's immature and um, quite, you know, baseless and stupid. I'm not using it in that sense. I'm, I'm using it in, in the true sense of the word, wise fool, uh, where it's, it's interesting, but it's not, it's not deep, it's not absolutely profound. Um, and again, it does feel like this was a film that was made by 20-year-olds. Now, is, does this make this a bad film? Not at all. Um, but it's something where you, you can watch it once, maybe twice, just to kind of, well, one, to kind of get used to how everything plays out. Uh, and there are, some generally, there are some generally shocking moments. I, I said that the violence is not as gory, but, there, but what it lacks in gore, it, there's... Um, it makes up for in other respects. For instance, there is this, the, the progression of these filmmakers is, initially there's this, there's a sense of detachment, the, the trying to separate from, uh, trying to separate themselves from the subject and just, I mean, obviously filming the subject in a very authentic way, but not getting completely involved. Then there's a point where they do start to get involved in these activities. Whether it be chasing kids, whether it be holding feet, whether it be loading up ballasts for the corpses in order for them to sink, um, and this is probably the most shocking. And this was this was one of the scenes that, that had to be trimmed um, 
in a in a larger release and and when it was released in certain countries rape <laughs> there is there's a moment where um, the gang the the band of filmmakers breaks into someone's house and they end up uh, raping this woman who's married and they all take turns and it, there's something quite quite well yeah it's very disturbing <laughs> to see the um, to see this exchange between the filmmakers, uh, at one point Rene goes up and and does it, and then Andre, who's the cameraman, he has to go up, and so he hands the camera to Rene, and then he goes up and has his turn, and then um, I think it's Vincent at this point, uh, the sound recordist, he shows up and he's doing it, and and it's you know he's he's doing this while he's holding the while he's holding the boom mic. And just kind of this evil sort of, not evil grim, but well, I get, there's some hint of evil, but it's just more of the, it's more of this sinister, uh, diabolical. Yeah, it's the same thing, <laughs> same thing as evil. But yeah, um, yeah, there's something quite disturbing about that, and, and it does sort of get under your skin, um, and it is pushing buttons, and that's something that also twenty year olds like to do. They like to push buttons. In people and just say, "Oh, do you like this?" So, in a certain sense, this is one of the earliest troll films. <laughs> if you like the concept of trolling people and getting under people's skin, that's certainly this is certainly up your alley. Um, but yeah, it's it's so so yeah, their action. So the I, the point of all of this, the the the, the and actually. And you would think that, okay, did anybody object to this? The woman actually understood, the, the, who was the poor victim, um, she apparently was, uh, she understood what they were trying to do, and she said, oh, go along, dummy, don't, and because there was this initial nervousness on their part. Um, and, but she said, oh, don't, you know, I, I know what you're trying to do, don't worry about it, it's, it's, it's fine, and so... Uh, I don't know if that makes it any better or not, but <laughs> but it happened. Um, but anyways, with this sense of complicit, the, just going from detachment or or a certain uh, objectivity into full on complicity um, is one of the, is, uh, and then thus because the filmmakers are involved in this, there's this uh, there's this notion of audience complicity, which is something that was alluded to in uh, Peeping Tom, which again caused, uh, was very likely one of the causes of, of the strong vit vitrilic reaction against the film, um, is by, um, it, it makes it clear that there is sort of a voyeuristic aspect to it, and, and by, you know, the filmmaker filming these crimes, then we as an audience are, are complicit because we are accessories to the crimes. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, then there's, well, actually, uh, most critics and the audience reaction, they, they point out the violence and those things are certainly there. The, uh, the way that violence is certainly is exploited by news and, and the creating of sensational headlines. Again, the reason why Man Bites Dog is the international title for the film. Um, because murders happen, you know, they don't happen often and, and it's, and it's, and it's sensational. It's, it's, uh, it, it generates an emotional reaction and it's something that will draw a lot of attention. And now we've gotten to the point where we feel because murder is covered so frequently, it, there is, um, you do feel numb to it, and and you no longer react to it with horror. You just kind of go, eh, and that's what this film also does. You 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 see Benoit or Ben kill everyone, and you just get to the point where you just where it's like, you know what? I really don't care. <laughs> um, and then that that's also disturbing uh, in a way. If you if you feel that okay, he's just another he's just another one to add to the list. He's another one you have to you have to dump into the river. And if you get to that kind of indifference, then you kind of go, okay, what's wrong with me? Why am I allowing myself to do this? So, but anyways, while the, that's the reaction for the, for the filmmakers themselves, initially the starting point they had was they wanted to 
make a film about making a film that has no money, which was a reflection of where they were, because they were they were film school students, and they and money was always the big thing. So it, it started from there, and then it became this: okay, what if what if the what if the way you can get the money to fund the film is if you start if you rob people and, and murder people, and so. So therefore, you have the producer as a serial killer, which of course is is a nice little um, commentary about what you can if you want if you want to be negative about filmmaking, particularly commercial filmmaking, that producers have to be hustlers and 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 even and even and producers can act more like gangsters. Uh, this is something that I will allude to very shortly in the very new future, this idea. Hang on to that thought. <laughs> Stay tuned. But anyway, so, uh, so the idea of producer as the killer and, and that um, he, and also because he's, the, he's more or less the star, he's the initiator of the project, it's, it's a celebration of his activities. And which then begs the question, why would he do this? <laughs> Why would he do this to himself? I mean, there's no, there's, there's, uh, that's a surefire way of self damnation in any court to be able to have this film crew follow you around and, and film you your various exploits and you go, okay, this is not going to fly. Uh, I mean, it's the kind of thing where you're just going to, he's going to be sent into a hole and he'll stay there for the rest of his days plus a few centuries. Yes, it's that kind of, it's that kind of bad. Um, but, yeah, it, it, so again, it, it touches on some interesting issues, and it's not just, it, it's provocative, it's not just, it, it's not, it's not pure, I, I call this an early troll film, but it's not entirely just trolling, it's not just infuriating some way just for the lulls, um, it, it is, it, it does have a point, it's, it's, it's a provocation with a point. But the point is not the most profound. It's, it's the kind of thing where once you see it, you think about it like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then you don't, and you may move on. For some people, they love this film. And again, I, I think of this as a film by 20-year-olds for 20-year-olds. And when you're 20 years old, you may find this the most fascinating thing in the world. And as you get older, you may revisit it and go, okay, I know why I liked it then, but... Eh, <laughs> um, whatever. <laughs> and in a way, I, I kind of feel, I kind of feel that way too. I mean, I, I probably found it earlier, found it quite shock. I, I'm sure I found it very shocking. And I also picked up on the black humor aspect because it, it is, it is a very, it's a very dark comedy. Um, and so I understand why it was amusing, but it also made sense because I didn't quite know any better. <laughs> and and I, when I watched this, I, I must have been 20, 21, 22. So it's, and then now I'm, now I'm 30. And a lot has happened since then. And so it's one of those films where, I mean, I don't, again, I don't think it's terrible. It's a terrible film. I don't think it's a horrible film. In a way, I'm glad that it's on the shelf. I'm glad that I've seen it, but it's not the... I don't find this to be the greatest film in the world. If I did, I I don't find it now. If I did back then, I don't find it now. So would I recommend this? Well, if you have a strong stomach for those kinds of things, if violence doesn't entirely bother you, then I would say give it a shot. Um, and I would say that if you see this, then probably it would it will actually maybe maybe even toughen you a bit to see something even if you if you're dragged into something worse i don't know why if you don't like violence all that much i don't know why you would actively see it but if somehow you find yourself in a situation you do you can you can say that oh well all right this is not bad <laughs> i've seen worse <laughs> it can't be any bad than um than man bites dog um so yeah it's it's um and, and, and 
I don't know. I don't know why I, I feel like I've, I've berated this film. It's it's again, it's not terrible. And while I I while there is not a whole lot of depth, it it is intriguing that those issues are raised. And the fact that they are raised means that there was something a little bit more to it. But this was this is why I can say it without feeling you know without feeling too too bad about it because this was made by film school students. This is this. I mean, if you. The joke is usually that that film that films that you make in film school are full of pretension. They they seem to go for big ideas, but because of lack of experience, because of available resources, because of just because you don't know any better, it just comes off it comes off as pretentious. And pretentious in the true sense of the word. Thank you, Cal Calgren, for emphasizing this point whenever it's brought up. Pretension is really unearned profundity. That's really what pretension is. It's, in other words, if if you say that oh, this is supposed to, this is supposed to mean this, and there's nothing at all to back it up, um, then then it's considered rightfully pretentious. This is not pretentious. This 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 does have a it has earned its points. Uh, it has earned the points that it makes. But it's not particularly deeply insightful. It's not, it doesn't, it lacks the sophistication of, if, if an older filmmaker, like, compare this to Peeping Tom. Michael Powell was able to do, was able to make Peeping Tom. And it definitely had, it definitely followed a B-movie aesthetic. But, he was all. He, this was also the same guy who made, with Pressburger, the Red Shoes, um, Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, Black Narcissus, all these other, you know, uh, films with high production values, and he makes Peeping Tom. So he's he's had the career, he's had the experience, to back it up, and and thus, in Peeping Tom, there's there's a bit more sophistication in making the points, whereas. This, these are these are all people in their twenties. They're in film school. They're starting out. This is what launched Benoit Pauval's uh, acting career, um, and so it's <clears throat> so these are these are people starting out. So the, it's it's all based on what they what they were immediately familiar with, what they what they knew. It wasn't all that much, and so the so it's not as sophisticated. And that's and that's not making a value judgment. That's not saying that, oh, this is bad and this is good. It's just pointing out the difference. Um, and all I'm talking about is is in the all I'm talking about is sophistication, and that's perfectly objective. I mean, that's it's just a, it's just more or less a fact. It's not necessarily my opinion, um, but anyway. So yeah. So yeah. Um, Man Bites Dog. And until next time, take care.